Welcome to part one of the Guide to Microsoft Excel Functions brought to you by ExcelLearningZone.com. This video tutorial will show you how to use most of the popular functions in Microsoft Excel. This lesson assumes you know how to use basic functions like sum and average. If you've never used any functions before, look for one of my basic function tutorials. Consider this a quick reference guide to most of the popular functions you'll use in Excel from day to day. I'm not going to cover all of Excel's functions, but I will show you most of the popular ones. I'm going to show you how to use the functions that will allow you to accomplish most tasks that are common in Excel. Now, I've been using Excel since the early 90s, and I don't think that even I've used all the functions that are available. The basic functions that most people use most of the time, sum, average, count, max, and min. Sum adds up all the cells in a range. Average calculates their average. Count will tell you the unique number of numeric values in a range. Max gives you the largest value. And min gives you the smallest value. Next, we have a whole bunch of text functions. First, you have exact. Exact checks to see whether two strings are exactly the same. Here I have two columns of names, column A and column B. And in column C, I have the exact function. It's exact, the first value, comma, the second value. Notice that Joe and Mark are not exact. Sue and Sue are not exact because of capitalization. The exact function is case sensitive. Notice Dave and Dave are exact, so the exact function returns a true. The concatenate function can be used to join several text strings together into one. Here I have first name and last name. I want to join them together into the full name. Now there's two ways you can do it. You can say equals A2 ampersand and then quote space quote to put a space between them ampersand B2. That'll take A2, add a space, and then add B2. And that concatenates Joe and Smith. Or you can also use the concatenate function, equals concatenate, open parentheses, and then select the items. Joe, comma, now I need a space here, so I'll put space inside of quotes, comma, and then Smith. Close the parentheses, and there's the concatenate function. It works the same way, and we can autofill it down. The len function gives you the length of a string. Here I've typed in equals the length of C2, which tells me that Joe and Smith with a space in the middle is nine characters long. That's the len function. If you want to get information out of a string, you can use the left, right, and mid functions to get the leftmost, rightmost, or middle characters from a string. Here I've used the left, right, and middle functions. This is the left of C2, which is the full name, comma 2, which says, give me the left two characters from cell C2, which is J-O in this case. There's B-I and A-M. Right works the same way. The right of C2, comma 2, which in this case is T-H. For the mid function, you specify three bits of information, what cell you want, where do you want to start, and then how many characters do you want? I said start five characters over and give me three characters long. In this particular case, it's SMI. That's left, right, and mid. If you want to find information inside of a string, you can use either the find or search functions. Both return the starting position of one string inside of another. Find is case sensitive, search is not. Here I've used the find function to locate the position of the space inside of the full name. Here you can see the function find an empty space and then C2. In this particular case, it's position 4. For Bill Jones, it's position 5. If it doesn't exist, you get a value error. If you want to convert strings to lower, uppercase, or proper case, you can use the lower, upper, and proper functions. Here you can see the lower, upper, and proper functions in action. Lower converts all the characters to lowercase. 
upper to uppercase, and proper converts them in name format. So the first character of each word is uppercase. The rest of the characters are lowercase. Moving on to time and date functions, to get the current date or time, use the now or today functions. The now function returns the current date and time, whereas the today function only returns the current date. They take no parameters, empty parentheses, and just put in equals today, parentheses, and then press enter. Once you have a date or time, you can use the year, month, day, and hour, minute, second functions to extract those individual components from that date time. For example, to get the year of a date, type in equals year, and then give it the date. You can either type the date in or reference a cell value. I've typed in equals the year of A1. Enter. There's the year, month, day, hour, minute, and second. There's also a weekday function, so you can tell what day of the week a date falls on. It works very similar to the other functions. Type in equals weekday, your date value, and it returns a number from 1 to 7, with 1 being Sunday and 7 being Saturday. If you want to go the other way, if you want to take the individual components, like day, month, year, and build those into an Excel date value, you can use the date function, likewise the time function to build a time. For example, if I want to take the 2010, 9, and 4 and build an actual date out of that, I can say equals date, open parentheses, the year, comma, the month, comma, the day, close my parentheses, and press enter. And there is a valid Excel date value built from those components. Logical functions work with values that are either true or false. True and false are functions that will return the values true and false, but they're also just values themselves. The first logical function you might need to work with is not. Not simply reverses a true or false. Here, for example, I have two values, true and false. If I say equals not a1, I get a false. If I say equals not a2, I get a true. I just simply reverse those values. You can use the functions and and or to determine certain things about a group of true-false values. And returns true if all of the values in a group are true, or returns true if any of the values in a group are true. Here's a simple logic table. I have values true or false in columns A and B. The AND function will return true if both A2 and B2 are true, and in this case they are. For every other instance in this column, they're not. OR will return true if either of those values is true. And in this case, you can see that three of them are true and just one is false. This brings us to the mother of all logical functions, IF. IF allows you to assign one value if something is true and another value if it's false. Here I have a simple sheet showing an order ID, an order total, and what state the order is from. I need to determine whether or not to charge sales tax. I only charge sales tax to customers in New York State. So here I can say equals if, and then some logic test. If C2 equals, inside of quotes, New York, comma, then charge them sales tax. So this value will be B2 times 0 0.0875, 8 and 3 quarters percent comma, otherwise the value is zero. Close the parentheses and press enter. And you can see for this customer who happens to be in New York, I have to charge him $8.75. Drag it down, and you can see the if function takes care of figuring out which customers are from New York. This is the end of part one of my Excel guide to functions. You can find part two on my website at excellearningzone.com.